okay so i think we have our app ready just hitting the add button is gonna sync all messages in real time let's do this okay three two one shit hey youtube it's me your tech bot in the last video we saw how to design a planet scale real-time app we saw how people usually do it uh, using things like Redis and WebSockets and we kind of took it up a notch by introducing a messaging broker with stronger guarantees and change data capture. This video is all about getting our hands dirty. You haven't seen the last video haven't you? Check it out. The link's here or maybe here. I'll give you a quick recap anyways. So we designed an architecture to sync database events across multiple nodes. The client would send a request to the server to add a message. The server would then fire a mutation query on the database, get back an ACK, and send a response to the client immediately. For the real-time aspect, we introduced a CDC engine which monitored the database logs to pick up affected documents. It pushed them out to a messaging broker like RabbitMQ directly, and through that, we transfer the message to our clients. You should seriously go and check the video out. Okay, time to move on to what we'll be building today. It's not a chat app, but it's a real-time to-do app. Hey, don't judge me. How on earth am I supposed to build a real-time chat app in under 10 minutes? Give me a break. It's gonna be a simple to-do app and just support four operations. To add a to-do, Mark a to-do as updated or completed, delete a to-do, and because I had made a big fuss about this last time, delete all to-dos. Got it? Time to check out the tools we'll be using. For the database, I decided to go with MySQL. There's no particular reason as such, but I just feel MySQL hasn't been getting a lot of attention lately. So this one's for you, MySQL. Now choosing a CDC engine is a bit tricky because there's no standardization here but luckily we got Debezium. Debezium is an amazing CDC engine which has got connectors for multiple databases so if you're not happy with MySQL switch it out. Um, Sorry MySQL. Debezium also has native integration with Apache Kafka making it super reliable for sourcing database events and if you're not happy with Kafka or you just don't want to use it uh, you can embed Debezium in your own Java app. And did I mention that it's supported by Red Hat and used by like a ton of organizations? It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Now using Debezium directly can be a bit difficult. And that's where our next pick comes in, Space Cloud. Space Cloud is a Kubernetes based serverless platform which lets you develop, deploy and secure your applications. Most importantly, it's got a database module which generates REST and GraphQL APIs instantly on top of Mongo, MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server. SQL Server? Okay. The best part is that Space Cloud integrates with Debezium as a part of its eventing module. In other words, you can write Space Cloud queries to subscribe to database changes out of the box. No backing code required at all. Now I know what you're thinking, how is this secure? How can we let anyone access our database directly? This can't be used in the real world. Don't worry, Spaceload has a robust security module which lets you model all kinds of access control policies, even things like ABAC and RBAC. How do I know it? I've built SpaceCloud. And I'll be doing a complete video on security, you know? how to centralize your security, how to decouple security from code, how to build a zero trust network. You should probably subscribe. So using Debezium along with the database module of Space Cloud is kind of enough to build a real-time to-do app, at least on the back-end side of things. All we need to do now is build out a front-end. So there's this one thing you should probably know about me. I'm not really a front-end guy. Uh, but I'm gonna try it anyway, so just go easy on me. And I'll be using React, cause that's all I know. Also, all tools being used here are open source. Just letting you know. 
before we start the final version of this project is already up on github uh, go check it out for your reference i'll be working on the step one branch of the same repo it's it's got some boilerplate react code and you know i'll be working up from there just to be clear once again since we're using the bzm and space cloud we don't really need to write backing code we just need to configure our backend however we will be writing code on the front end side of things to consume these APIs. Starting with the back end, I've already made a Docker Compose file for you guys, which brings up MySQL, Debezium, Space Cloud, and its dependencies. Uh, all you need to do is Docker Compose up and you're up and running. Did I mention you need Docker to do all of this? I didn't? Oh, should probably go and install Docker first. Once all our containers are up and running, we can open Mission Control, which is Space Cloud's admin UI. The first step is creating a project. I'm gonna call it To Do App. The next one is adding a database. Make sure MySQL is selected. The only config we need to change is the connection string. Replace localhost with MySQL. You can configure other things as well, like the database you wanna use or the alias you wanna assign to this database. I'm just gonna leave them as is and just add this database. Now our to-do app will need a table to store all its data. Space Cloud lets us create tables from within Mission Control itself. Head over to the database section and add a table. I'm just gonna name it to-dos. It's gonna have four fields. First, the ID field, which is our primary key. Uh, then we'll have a column to store the value of the to-do. Uh, a timestamp column, which is simply when the to-do was created. And of course, whether the to-do has been marked as completed or not. Once you're ready, just hit add. Adding or tracking a table in Space Cloud automatically generates APIs for them. But to enable real-time functionality, we need to take two more steps. First, enable real-time on that table. Second, Head over to the eventing sections and under the settings tab, enable eventing. This will automatically configure Debezium to watch our database and generate events for them. That pretty much sums up what we need to do on the back end. Seems unreal, doesn't it? Okay, next in line comes our React app. I've already gone ahead and set up a project and you know created an offline version of the app we need. Let's just take a moment to admire the code. See how beautiful it is? Now have a look at the UI. Garbage. So we can add to-dos one by one, mark them as updated, delete them. We can even delete all the to-dos at once if you want to. Remember, all of this is happening in React itself. None of the data is being stored on the database. That part we'll be doing together. I've made an app component which stores the entire state of the application. See this hook right here? That's where our to-dos are stored. I've also made some utility functions to add, update, and delete to-dos. Right now, as you can see, they're updating our state directly. We want them to fire requests to our backend instead. That's the only part of the code that we need to change. Apart from the app component, I have two other components like this one. They don't really have logic in them. They are purely presentational and invoke our utility function when needed. I really hope I've been clear on what I've done till now on the React front. I could have started from scratch, but that would make this video unnecessarily long. And you guys don't click on any video which is more than 15 minutes. To link our React app with the backend, we need to consume the API Space Cloud generates for us. There are two ways of doing it. The first is using GraphQL queries. It offers maximum flexibility. I mean, you can do things like cross database joins, join REST services with a database. Insane. The second one is to use the JavaScript SDK directly. For real time stuff, I usually tend to use the SDK more. So here's what we need to do. The first step is installing the Space API SDK in our app. The second, we import it and initialize the API and DB object. Then we need to create helper utilities to add, update, and delete to-dos. Finally, we write some code to subscribe to all database changes. And obviously, we need to use all these functions we just made in our React code. Okay, 
So the first step is to install the Space API SDK from NPM. This one SDK has everything we would need to build our app. I prefer keeping all my client code in a separate folder or file. So for now, I'll just make a client.js where all our backend interactions will sit. Now we need to import the API clause from Space API and make an API object. The first parameter is the project ID and the second one is the Space Cloud URL. If you want to access this app from different devices, you will need to replace localhost with your or your VM's IP address. We also need to make one DB object for each database we have. In our case, it's just MySQL. The parameter we pass here is the DB alias we had used while adding the database in Space Cloud. If you had used another DB alias like DB, ABC, or I don't know, Hakuna Matata, punch in that. Okay, it's time to make functions to add, update, and delete to-dos. All these functions will be async to just make dealing with promises easier. Let's start with the function to add a to-do. It's gonna have just one parameter, the to-do value. We use the DB object to insert a document in the database using one simple command. db.insert, specify the table name, pass the document to be inserted, and apply. I usually don't prefer writing database queries directly on the front end, and I'll show you a better way of doing this when we make a video on security. The apply function returns a response containing the status code and error message. We'll simply return the error along with a negative acknowledgement if the status code isn't 200. Otherwise, return act true. The frontend can use this act to throw an error notification or something. And let's wrap the add function body in a try catch just to be safe. The update function isn't all that different either. It will take an ID and an is completed status field. The update command looks similar as well. db.update, specify the table name, specify a where clause. Now this is where the condition field comes handy. We also need to pass the fields that we need to update and apply. This returns a response object as well. So let's handle the error and we're good. The function to delete todos looks exactly like the update todo function. Simply rename update to delete and remove the set clause. Delete all todos is delete todos minus the where clause. Writing these functions to do CRUD operations on our database is pretty standard stuff, nothing fancy. It's time to create the subscription object now. We'll call this function get todos. It will take a callback as a parameter. We expect the get todos to call this callback with the updated todo list whenever there is a change in the todos table. Space API gives us a db.life query function to subscribe to database changes. You simply specify the table name you want to watch, put in a where clause, and provide a snapshot and error callback. The on snapshot callback is called whenever there is a change in the database. The on error callback is called if there was an error for some reason. So let's make the on snapshot callback. It's pretty straightforward. We get four parameters here. The first is an entire array of all records. This is the result you would have got otherwise if you would have fired a select query with a similar where clause. We get a flag to denote the type of the event, a find object to uniquely identify the affected document, and the document which was affected. It's important to remember that Space Cloud doesn't really send the entire array over the wire. Only the changes are propagated. Space API takes up the responsibility to maintain this array on the client side. We'll simply invoke our callback with the docs array as is. The first parameter is for error, so we'll just leave that null for now. Coming to the on error callback, 
We get an error as a parameter here, which we can simply pass to a callback directly. Easy. Well, that's it. All we need to do now is consume these functions in our React code. You know what? We should probably take a break. Sip some water. I'll wait. Okay, time to use the functions we just made in our React code. Let's import all of that as client. We need use effect as well. I'll come to that in a bit. Time to head over to our app component and start with the add to do function. Now, instead of mutating the state directly, uh, we need to call the client.add to do and pass the to do value we are receiving to it. Client.add to do returns a promise as well. We will simply throw an alert if there was an error or something. Update and delete to do's will be similar, so let me go ahead and finish that real quick. I think this looks pretty good. We are firing mutation queries alright, but we aren't really updating our state anywhere. That's where the use effect comes in. What we need to do is create a subscription when the component mounts and then unsubscribe when it unmounts. Use effect helps us achieve precisely that. We can call client.getToDo's in use effect and use the subscription object it returns to unsubscribe when the component unmounts. We'll set the toDo state in the callback we passed to getToDo's. Time to see things in action. But this time, we'll open the app in two windows. Let's add a to-do. Okay. How about updates? Uh-huh. Delete. Seems to work as well. Okay. Now, what if we try to delete all our to-dos in one shot? Perfect. So, there we have it. Our real-time to-do app. A quick recap of what we did today. First, we spun up the backend and configured SpaceCloud and Debezium to set up CDC. Second, we wrote some binding code on the front end side of things to consume the APIs we just generated. Third, we just linked it up to our front end code. And that was pretty much it. The best part is that we can scale out to millions of users without adding any load to our database per se. The entire project is on GitHub, link in the description below. I think I'm gonna be making a video on securing these APIs next, so do subscribe, like and share if you love this video, and don't forget to keep coding and stay curious.